120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because he had an excellent spirit. And the king thought to set, over, set him over the whole realm. So I want to focus on today on the importance of excellence. Many times in life, we allow ourselves to decline in terms of excellence and service. And I found an, an interesting e example about excellence that I want to share with you. And so the question today is, are you Ezra or Thomas? So these two college roommates, Ezra and Thomas, joined a company together after graduation. After a few years of work, Ezra was promoted to the position of senior sales manager, but Thomas remained in his entry level position. Because of this, Thomas developed a sense of jealousy and disgruntlement, but he continued working. One day, Thomas felt that he couldn't take it anymore working with Ezra, and he wrote his resignation letter. But before he submitted it to the manager, he complained to management about how they didn't value hard work and how they promoted people based upon favor as opposed to their work. The manager knew that Ezra worked very hard for, for the years he had spent in the company even harder than Thomas, and therefore he deserved a promotion. So in order to help Thomas realize this, the manager gave him a task. The manager said, go out and find if anyone is selling watermelons in town. So Thomas returned and said, yes, there is someone. The manager said, how much per kilogram? So Thomas drove back into town and asked and found out and said, they are $13.50 per kilogram. So the manager told Thomas, I will give Ezra the same task that I gave you. Please pay close attention to his response. So the man manager said to Ezra, in the presence of Thomas, go in town and find out who is selling watermelons. So Ezra went out, and upon his return, he said, Manager, there was only one person selling watermelons in the whole town. The cost is $49 for each watermelon, $32.50 for half melon. He sells them at $13.50 per, kilo per kilogram in slice. He has in his stock 93 melons, each one weighing 7 kilograms. He has a farm and can supply us with melons for the next four months at a rate of 102 melons per day at $27 per for melon, which includes delivery. The melons appear fresh and red with good quality. They taste better than the ones we saw last year. He has his own slicing machine and is willing to slice for us free of charge. We need to strike a deal with him by 10 a.m. tomorrow, and we will be sure of beating last year's profits by some $223,000. This will contribute positively to our overall performance as it will add 3.78% to our current level sales targets. I have this information down in writing and is available on a spreadsheet and I can also email it to you. Please let me know if you need it as I can send it to you in about 15 minutes. After this exercise, Thomas realized the difference between he and Ezra. So my question to you today is, are you Thomas or Ezra? <laughs> it's very important for us to be excellent because excellence is what God is. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, it says, how excellent is your name. And so if we are representing him, we need to be excellent also. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads together. <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you once again for this opportunity to gather to conduct business on behalf of the people of the Bahamas. We ask for your wisdom, your guidance. And Father, may everything that we do and say be done decently and in order. 
And we thank you for a positive outcome. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, all in the glory, that are in heaven. Amen. Peter Turnquist, Brent Simonet, Desmond Bannister, Brentwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Dwayne Sand, Marvin Dame, Frankie Campbell, Nicio Diagla, Michael Pintard, Darren Henfield, Ramal Ferrero, Nicky Roll, Renzo Roll, Ellsworth Johnson, Philip Davis, Vaughn Miller, Patricia Parker Edgecombe, Hiram Lewis, Carlton Bolag, James Aldry, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Donald Saunders, Quaker Pine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Pope, Miriam Reckley Emanuel, Reese Chipman, Ruben Ramy, Ricky Matthews, Shannon Don Cartwright, Chanel Ferguson, Leonard Hannah Martin, Pricewell Forbes, Chester Cooper. Good morning, honorable members. Honorable members, I'm in possession of a communication dated the 2nd of April from the honorable member for the Centerville constituency. It's addressed to the clerk of the parliament and it is captioned, Commonwealth of the Bahamas Parliamentary Service Bill 2021. This is a notice to parliament to lay on the table a bill for an act to establish parliamentary service of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to provide its parliamentary service commission, its membership, functions, operation, and financial management of the parliamentary institution, and to provide for the transfer of staff and the continuation of their service under the parliamentary service and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto whose objectives are as follows. A, to establish the independence of the legislature by placing the responsibility of the parliament under the control and management of the autonomous body independent of the executive. B, to confer on such body the power to provide parliament with the necessary administrative and financial facilities and services necessary for Parliament to perform its constitutional mandate. C, to enable the legislature to generate revenue, receive grants, and manage its own financial and administrative affairs while promoting good governance, the separation of powers, and the rule of law in a parliamentary democracy established since the 29th of September, 1729. And D, to promote accountability and transparency through education, technology, and citizen participation in the democratic process. And that is signed by the Honorable Member Reese Chipman, Member for Centerville, the constituency of Centerville. that the notice to lie on the table. Also, honorable members, this morning, the Constituencies Commission was scheduled to meet. 
notwithstanding the notices given, the, the meeting did not occur, and the only members present were the members. receiving up-to-date data from the Parliamentary Registration Department. In the absence of the member for Mount Mariah, a chairman of the commission are making a public appeal to the honorable member for Kalani to request that the commission be provided with the updated statistics from the Parliamentary Registration Department by Friday of this week. It is, in, it is in the intention of the chairman of the commission to conclude its sitting on the 19th of April, which is Monday following. It is impossible and impractical to give a reasonable report and recommendation without the empirical data. The last time the Commission received data was on the 22nd of February 21, 2021. And on the 2nd of March, the Commission's meeting was attended by representatives from the Parliamentary Registration Department and at that time there was a pledge that the Commission would receive weekly updates. But from the 1st of March until today's date, despite numerous inquiries made by Mr. Flowers, who assists the Clerk of the Parliament, as well as myself, the Commission has not been provided with any updates. An analysis of the data that was provided on the 1st of March, on the 22nd of February, rather, indicates that in New Providence there are two constituencies that are have more than 6,000 voters that are approaching 7,000 voters. Those, those are the constituencies, Golden Isles and Kalani. And there are 13 constituencies between 5,000 and 6,000 voters. Eight constituencies in New Providence between 4,000 and 4,900 voters and one constituency, St. Barnabas, with a number of votes between 3,000 and 3,900. Now if we examine New Providence, the number of voters in New Providence, based on the statistics provided, 123,783 we will arrive at an average of 5,158 voters. And it is, the, it is the constitutional duty of the Commission to try to bring about parity 
among voters. It is therefore estimated that each constituency should range between 5,100 voters plus 500 or less 500. And that will be a reasonable parity. In other words, 4,600 or so to 5,500 or 600, which should be a reasonable range. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we must increase the numbers of seats. We can adjust the boundaries to bring about such parity. Or we can increase the number of, numbers of seats to bring about such parity. Likewise, we have the similar conditions in Grand Bahama, where when we average out the numbers of number of voters in Grand Bahama, of 29,515, the average is approximately 5,900 for Grand Bahama. So as a consequence, we need the empirical data by Friday of this week so that we can conclude a hearing and report. Uh, we, will want, we want to conclude our hearing on the 19th of April and report to this parliament. Any failure to provide the statistics that is being requested by the commission will result in the commission not rendering a report to this parliament, which is a constitutional function which, in my estimation, is being frustrated. Accordingly, I table statistics for New Providence and the Palmy Islands with respect to the, the averages and the total number of voters in each constituency, ordered that the document do lie on the table. Hey. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think I beg leave to lay on the table now the copy of the following uh, Emergency Powers COVID 19 Pandemic Risk Management Number 4, Amendment Number 10, Order 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the copy of the following. The Public Debt Management Act 2021 Appointment Day Notice 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table the House Public the following. The Public Procurement Act 2021 appointment date notice 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by Minister. Yes, I beg leave lay on the table of the House to copy the following. The Public Finance Management Act 2021 appointment date notice 2021.
order that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave lay on the table of the House of Copy the following. Statistics Act 2021, appointment day notice 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for sudden shores. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following document. The Price Control General Amendment Number 3 Regulation 2021. On behalf of Minister Larris. Order that the document be brought up. Yes. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for sudden show. Mr. Speaker, thank you. On behalf of Minister Ramal Ferreira, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Biological Resources and Traditional Knowledge Act 2021, appointed day notice 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Yamakro. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. A. The Industries Encouragement Approved Product, Bethel Manufacturing Enterprise Limited, Order 2021. Order that the document be brought up. Table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Yamakro. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Industries Encouragement Approved Manufacturing, Bethel Manufacturing Enterprise Limited Order 2021. Order that the document be brought up. That the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. You recognize the honorable member for Yamakro. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following The Industries Encouragement Approved Product Lutra Sales Order 2021. Order that the document be brought up. that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Chair recognize the honorable member for Yamakro. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Industries Encouragement Approved Manufacturing Due to Sales Order 2021. Order that the document brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. No further documents, Mr. Thank you, Honorable Member. Statements and communications by ministers. Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Carmichael. Speaker, I listened 
very carefully to Pastor Dave this morning. And you know, my name is Thomas. <laughs> mm. So I have to strive to continue to strive to do a little better. This is a communication on operations conducted in the Abaco Shanty Town on Thursday, the 8th of April, 2021. Speaker, over the past few decades, thousands of people have deliberately occupied lands in this country that they do not own. In the process, they have created shanty towns throughout the country in breach of the laws. Many of them have open holes for toilets, unlawful or no connection to the electrical grid, pirated or no connections to water. The residents are not inspected and do not meet building codes. Conditions are unsanitary, non-compliant, and unlawful businesses flourish and stolen goods proliferate. Several such communities have existed on the island of Aru. Hurricane Dorian exposed some of the dangers of those unregulated communities, but it wiped three of them out. The mud, the sea, and sand bite. To speak, I vividly recall the horror that residents of those communities reported. I recall the devastation, and I will never, never, sir, I will never forget the stench of decaying bodies. To this date, sir, we still do not know exactly how many persons died in those shanty towns. It's important to mention, sir, that in 2018, the Supreme Court issued orders that impacted both the government and shanty towns quarters. In March 2018, the court issued an order which read in part, and I'm going to quote it. Restraining the respondents from taking possession of, demolishing and building, or otherwise interfering with the 177 applicants and other residents and occupiers enjoy enjoyment of land in shanty towns in New Providence, including by disconnecting any utilities other than pursuant to the relevant enabling legislation pending determination of this action. End quote. Then, Mr. Speaker, on 17 December 2018, the Supreme Court issued another order that varied the previous injunction. And the new order states, and I quote, further, pending the determination of this action or until such further order, the 177 applicants and other residents and occupiers of the land in Shanty Towns New Providence or elsewhere in the Bahamas and I emphasize that or elsewhere in the Bahamas shall take no action to construct erect or alter any further buildings or structures otherwise and in accordance with the Building Regulations Act hence Mr. Speaker the position prior to Hurricane Dorian was that the courts first prohibited the government from demolishing existing shanty town structures and the structures that had already been constructed. And at the same time, the courts prohibited anyone from constructing, from erecting, or from altering any unregulated shanty town buildings anywhere in the Bahamas. Speaker, the government of this country obeyed the court order, as we are obliged to do. However, many of these persons continue to unlawfully construct new buildings in shanty towns all over the country and to enlarge existing buildings. Speaker, Hurricane Dorian hit us in September 2019, and the government responded to devastation that was caused by completely clearing away all of the ruined buildings on the mud, the pea, and sand banks. The government also fenced those areas in at considerable cost to the Bahamian taxpayer. 
However, many of the residents of those communities sought out other locations on that island and constructed even more unregulated buildings. Mr. Speaker, those activities were in breach of the court order. One of the Shantytown locations in Abaco is a tract of land that is known as the farm. Shortly after the passing of Hurricane Dorian, the government caused drone footage to be taken of the farm community. The footage revealed that 30 of the shacks had survived Hurricane Dorian. It is clear that the injunction prevented the government from demolishing those 30 buildings. However, in defiance of the court order that prohibited them from constructing more buildings, persons continued to build more and more unregulated and unsafe structures. It was clear that these structures that were altered or erected after August 2018 without valid building permits blatantly disrespected and breached the court order and also contravened the provisions of the Building Regulations Act and the Planning and Subdivisions Act. To speak, I must emphasize that that legislation that I've mentioned was put in place to protect all of us. The horrible devastation in the mud from Hurricane Dorian clearly shows how persons can be injured and killed when structures are, are not built in accordance with the law. Additionally, sir, inspections and drone footage revealed the unsanitary and unhealthy practices that prevail, which endanger our health through the pollution of the water table with human feces and other items. In the case of the farm, this poses a real challenge in that the unregulated structures threaten to spread all the way to Treasure Key and to impact their groundwater. Studies in other islands show the similar results. Yet another challenge, Mr. Speaker, has been the proliferation of commercial sized generators and the sale of electricity the persons stealing electric wires from BPL and stringing them out haphazardly throughout the unregulated areas provide electricity to the shanty houses. This means first that we are inconvenienced by disruption of our service when wiring is stolen and the tax, as taxpayers we have to pay for the losses that BPL incurs in having to constantly replace stolen electrical wiring. Moreover, the wiring in these houses are unsafe and in breach of the Electricity Act, as are the generators themselves. Mr. Speaker, one need only recall the devastating fire in the mud two years ago to appreciate the danger that this practice poses to human life. Mr. Speaker, I might add that this electrical wiring process is not that of human kindness. Rather, it is done so that persons profit from the misery of their fellow human beings who are charged a weekly fee for the service. Speaker, unfortunately, many of these breaches in law are facilitated by Bahamians, who also have benefited financially by unlawfully providing services to unregulated communities. One such example at the farm was the nightly provision of heavy equipment to construct roads thereby enabling the construction of even more unregulated structures. Speaker, one other challenge has been the unregulated proliferation of services, such as unregulated, unlicensed shops, the sale of stolen goods, with un in unregulated and in illegally constructed communities. In response to these challenges, sir, the Cabinet authorized the Minister of Public Works to review the challenges that are associated with the farm and to coordinate such actions as may be required to ensure that the unlawful practices are stopped. As a result, Mr. Speaker, a number of government agencies, inclusive of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the Immigration Department, Bahamas Customs, Bahamas Power and Light, and a number of private sector partners work closely together to examine the challenges 
and to propose solutions. The result is a multi-phase coordinated plan, the first phase of which was executed on Thursday, the 8th of March. Mr. Speaker, the only person who can lawfully create public roads is the Minister of Public Works. No such determination had been made by the Minister in relation to the multiplicity of access roads that were being constantly created every night to provide access to the farm. Accordingly, beginning at 4.30 a.m. on Thursday morning, all of the illegally cre created access roads, except one, were blocked with large boulders. I caution to advise that the remaining road is not a public road, but will be left open for now in order to provide access to residents and authorities. Secondly, sir, large signs were posted prominently throughout the area. The signs are in English and in Creole. They provide a warning, first, that structures are erected contrary to the provision of the Building Regulations Act and the Building Code, and those structures will be demolished. The signs also warn that persons who erect structures contrary to the provision of the Planning and Subdivision Act will be subject to prosecution and the buildings will be demolished. Finally, sir, the signs warn that the Supreme Court has ordered that no action is taken to construct, erect, or alter new structures. Mr. Speaker, in this communication, I've also attached a copy uh, of a photograph showing where the roads are blocked and showing the, the signs that have been erected, some of the signs. And so when you get the communication, you're going to see uh, the, what we've done. And these are very, very large. These, these are culverts from the bridge that, that uh, did not survive Hurricane Dorian. So these are very large culverts. Uh, we do not anticipate that anybody is going to be able to move them, but of course, if someone wants to, they can, they can simply uh, push around the road and, create, and continue to create illegal roads. But we're going to do something about that. Speaker, the third action that was taken is that notices were fixed to all of the structures, all of the structures that were erected subsequent to the passage of Hurricane Dorian. There are two types of notices. First, for incomplete and unoccupied structures, the notices advise that they will be demolished after 14 days in accordance with the provision of the Planning and Subdivisions Act. For occupied structures, sir, the notices advise that they will be demolished after the passage of 28 days in accordance with the Buildings Regulations Act. The fourth action that was taken, Mr. Speaker, is that with the assistance of BPL and a private electrical contractor, nine commercial generators were confiscated. Mr. Speaker, these are not ordinary generators. These are commercial generators. These are large generators. Several were being operated for commercial purposes in contra contravention of the Electricity Act and a with a capacity to provide electrical power to close to 200 structures. The police also confiscated a number of generators that will be believed to have been stolen. And Mr. Speaker, I have photographs of these generators. You can see that these are, these are really large-scale commercial generators. Uh, we have, I have photographs in, in this communication, Mr. Speaker, of the kinds of electrical connections we have, which is very, very dangerous, showing how people were provided with power uh, for commercial purposes. Uh, we have, come, we have more photographs, Mr. Speaker, showing uh, how they control the power. The, speaker, the fifth action that was taken is that a number, of illegal, a number of illegal bars and commercial operations were closed. And so you will hear people speaking about items that were taken. And suspected uncustom goods Uncustom goods were taken into the protective custody of customs and police of officials. Mr. Speaker, I have a picture of one of the bar of a bar 
You can see the bar here. You can see how it was set up as a commercial operation. Um, so anyone in the media, they will get, they will get they will get this electronically. Additionally, sir, a number of persons were arrested for possession of firearm, possession of dangerous drugs, possession of uncustoms goods, and for violation of the immigration laws of the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'll, I'll tell you, Senator, I'll tell you. It is important that the law enforcement officers will remain in the area to prevent further breaches of the law. Additionally, sir, upon the expiry of 14 days from posting of the notices, all of the unoccupied and uncompleted structures will be demolished. Further, sir, in the second phase of our planned operation, as I indicated, all incomplete and unoccupied structures will be demolished. And they will be done in accordance with the notices that were posted pursuant to the provisions of the Planning and Subdivisions Act. Additionally, sir, on the expiry of 20 days, the third phase of the operation will begin with the demolition of other structures in accordance with the provisions of the Building Regulations Act. Speaker, I conclude by making three points. First, we are a country of laws. We must all respect the law and act in accordance therewith, including our health, immigration laws, and the building code. Secondly, sir, I repeat that much of what has occurred has happened with the complicity of many Bahamians. Where those persons are identified, appropriate action will be taken. Finally, sir, I applaud the courage and professionalism of our government agencies, particularly immigration officers, customs officers, defense force officers, and police officers. In particular, I thank Commissioner of Police, Mr. Paul Rohl, and the officer in charge of Abaco, Chief Superintendent Kenwood Taylor, for the thoroughness of their planning, the expertise that they provided, and the exceptional leadership that they displayed throughout the initial stage of this operation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. I order that the communication be brought up. That the communication to lie on the table. Speaker, my, uh, my communication is not supposed to be controversial. No. I, I seek not to make it controversial. Um, I indicated in the communication that at Dorian, there were only 30 structures left on the farm. Uh, there's a proliferation of structures there now. Uh, anything that I do uh, for the Bahamian people while I'm here, I'm seeking to do it for the reason I indicated in that communication. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Member. Hon Honorable Member, just before I proceed, I'm in receipt of a communication from the Governor General. Uh, not, not to remember, this, this is to all. Uh, 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 notice from the Governor General um, for the signing of the Book of Condolences uh, in memory of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of of Edinburgh. Uh, all members of Parliament uh, and the Senate 
are invited to sign the book of condolences between the hours of 2.15 p.m. and 5 p.m. today at the Governor General, Office of the Governor General at Government House. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm being advised that the signing would be at Montague Place. Okay, that's that's not indicated on the notice that I've received. So, members, it's at Montague. Okay, we'll we'll make inquiries to, to to that to see if that can be done to accommodate members. Okay, thank thank you, honourable members. Uh, further statements and communications by ministers. Communications by the clerk. Messages from the Governor General. Well, I just gave that one. Messages from the Senate. Motions for leave of absence, leave to resign, seat, and new writs. Presentations of petition. Presentation of reports of committees. Adoption of reports of committees. First reading of bills. Second reading and communication of bills. Okay. Committee of the whole house. Third reading and passing of bills. Consideration of Senate amendments. Resolutions. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Debate on resolution to transfer 83 or acres of property in the western district of the province uh, from the treasurer, treasurer to uh, the crown. The speaker is important for us as national leaders to have a governing philosophy that guides our vision and policies on behalf of the people who had sent us here. For the free national movement, what guides our vision is very clear. We want to empower Bohemians with opportunities so they can realize their potential and their dreams. And that is why my government made the historic investment to expand preschool education. We want young people to have the start necessary for a life of learning and a life of achievement. And that is why my government, Mr. Speaker, expanded free access to tertiary education at BTVI and the University of the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, when we came into office, we spoke about the Bahamian dream. That is, individuals wanting to receive proper education so that they can improve themselves and improve better job opportunities and advance further in life. We then defined that Bahamian dream, Mr. Speaker, that Bahamians pursued as education, housing, accommodation, land ownership, job, and finally, health care. And Ms. Speaker, when we came in, it's our objective to make those dreams a reality. In phase one of such the Bahamian dream is to speak in terms of education. We have provided free education to BTVI 
We provided free education to UB, University of Bahamas, thus saving individuals anywhere in excess from four to six thousand dollars that would have been spent annually for a proper education. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, we recognize that many students traveling from the family island would need accommodation to live here in New Providence and in a safe environment. And therefore, every student traveling from the family islands to New Providence to attend UB is given $500 per month to assist them with accommodation. Then, Mr. Speaker, we've made it a reality to provide free education for preschool. And we recognize that the government does not have sufficient preschool, and therefore those students, three preschoolers, three to four years old, who attend private preschool are given grants of $2,000 per year to ensure that the humans are educated properly. And Mr. Speaker, today, 1,500 of such grants has been issued and we continue to plow along to ensure that preschoolers are educated. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, many preschools were private, were not up to par, and 36 of such facilities were granted up to $25,000, monies that were used to upgrade their facility and take advantage of the $2,000 per student. We also recognize, Mr. Speaker, that the family islands may be somewhat compromised and that we are not NASA-centric, and there are family island preschoolers that likewise need education. And we've offered for individuals who are qualified to establish a preschool facility, we've offered to grant them the land free of charge, and they would be able to access small business development center for grants as well as development bank so as to ensure that our preschoolers in the family islands are likewise educated and in addition to that they too would take advantage of two thousand dollars per year for every student that utilizes speaker another component Bahamian dream that we are making reality is housing. And Mr. Speaker, housing is very important and it would probably be one of the largest investments to the average Bahamian. And I can recall, Mr. Speaker, when we were building our own house in Kennedy subdivision, that was my mother's biggest investment. Opportunities like we have today was not around yesterday. And I went purchased our property within the Kennedy subdivision area. The speaker, it took us 15 years to complete our home. And that was because, Mr. Speaker, for every $15, $20, we got, we would purchase whatever amount of, blo of blocks and materials that could. And the communities were so well knitted that individuals who had knowledge of construction would assist in laying such blocks. And all we had to pay at that time, the average Bahamian with no terminology that I am about to use, all we had to pay was provide land bound <laughs> to ensure that they were fed properly. And for those sophisticated individuals who do not know what slam bomb is, it's sausage that you put between two bread, you slam it there, and you bomb it together. 
slam bam. Sausage and bread. Now you know you wouldn't know. <laughs> That's why I explained it. But um, so Mr. Speaker, utilizing whatever monies we had, it took us 15 years to complete. Our greatest investment at that time, which would have been our home in Kennedy subdivision. But today we're offering better opportunities than yesterday. And we are offering proper facility. But Mr. Speaker, as I advance, I only want to mention that as I speak about the subdivision that we're about to embark upon, that subdivision would also have proper facilities for preschooling within that facility. But I would explain that as we progress. Then, Mr. Speaker, the other component of the Bahamian dream that we are making a reality is they would love to have a job. And we were struck. We were set back by three disasters. When we first came in, we had to manage Hurricane Irma, where we evacuated individuals from the southern Bahamas, never in the history of the Bahamas, a evacuation, and brought them all to safety. Then we were back by Dorian, and Dorian, everyone can speak on that, at great liberty. Then the world pandemic, and jobs obviously would have been lost. Mr. Speaker, the Bahamian dream and the reality still exist. And one of my ministers, several of my ministers, as they get up and speak, they would speak about various components of the Bahamian dream. And they would speak about the job component. Then, Mr. Speaker, the last component of the Bahamian dream is healthcare. Every individual would love education, they would love accommodation, they would love a job, and most of all, proper health care. And with time, as we progress, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Health would elaborate on the National Health Insurance Plan. He would elaborate on the expansion. We've completed one particular thing, the critical care block at the Princess Margaret Hospital. He would elaborate on the way forward of phase two. And he would elaborate on the expansions of the clinic and facilities and the Rand Memorial Hospital. But I would not say much about that today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we want Bahamians to be educated to find fulfilling careers so they can take care of themselves and their families. And that is why my government provided in funding, millions in funding to entrepreneurs via the Small Business Development Center and why we will invest even more in small businesses. We want Bahamians, Mr. Speaker, to start new enterprises to help grow our economy, and most of all, to create wealth. Our desire to help provide opportunity to Bahamians is why we are here today, debating a resolution to provide land for the development of a parcel of land, invest in New Providence for a residential development for young Bahamian professionals access to land and land ownership helps to build and to secure intergenerational wealth with one generation of a family able to build on what was achieved by previous generations. The land in question, Mr. Speaker, is an 83-acre parcel in the Prospect Ridge area near Bahama. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so as all can see, John F. Kennedy Drive, roundabout, 
Yeah. 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 Complex. Oval. <laughs> new building. Oval Turn Press Complex. And land is reserved for other expansion. On the eastern end of such land is Skyline Prospect Ridge. Then on the northern end is Sanford Drive with the residence of the American Embassy, residents for judges, and on the eastern end of such property is Balmoral, and land that was reserved for the home of the Prime Minister, and Mr. Speaker, the area is well developed, and um, I want to assure individuals within the area that there's no possibility of such development decreasing the value of their land. In fact, the value of their land will continue to escalate. So, Mr. Speaker, this is the land that I speak about in question. Just to give a, a brief view of what type of development the plan I'm placing there, there'll be multi and single family units. And the committee that's dealing with such development has proposed that the multi family units should be no more than duplexes. For obvious reasons, those who are in banking would know that as you go beyond, you then move into a commercial entity. This is the roundabout that we showed early on John F. Kennedy Drive. And as you know, there'd be entrance from such roundabout. And there'd be entrance coming from Prospect Ridge, not from Sanford Drive area. But Ms. Speaker, what is most significant here? We've done surveys of the land, and there are some areas of the land that are low-lying. And those areas, I'm sure the leader opposition would know very well. Within, just at the junction of Prospect and Sanford Drive, the land there is at least about three foot above street level. There will be no filling, there will be no excavation. And that component... Below, 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 sorry, below. And there will be no excavation, no filling, no compaction. We utilize the ecological environment and it can be used as runoff to ensure no flooding. And all those areas that are low within the area would be utilized accordingly. What is most noticeable within the commercial sector, Mr. Speaker, is a preschool. There'll be facilities for a preschool for such development, and such property would be a great opportunity for individuals with such knowledge to embark on a preschool and take advantage of what government is offering in terms of each student being, the facility being paid $2,000 per year for each student, in addition to taking advantage of all the concessions that I will speak about soon that are being offered there. Then, Mr. Speaker, in such facility, we are debating and the committee is debating whether within the commercial sector you can put a barbershop that's creating opportunity for individuals, nutrition, creating opportunities again for such individuals and other amenities, clubhouse, pool, etc. But Ms. Speaker, as time progresses, we would speak a lot more about this development. Mrs. 
Speaker, the development will be upscale, incorporating walking paths, walking paths, parks, a community center, a swimming pool, tennis court, and a clubhouse. It will be eco-friendly with minimal change to existing topography of the land. And I spoke of that, about that previously to ensure you that there will be no filling in of certain low-lying areas. We would maximize those areas and leave them in their existing in environment. There will be approximately 250 lots, including for single-family residences, townhomes, and duplexes. The exact number of parcels will be determined following consultations with the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and Town Planning on density restrictions. Those selected will be able to purchase lots of around the size of 70 to 95 by 100 foot, 100 feet, for a maximum sum of approximately $50,000. Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying is the government will offer such lots. <laughs> the government will offer such plots of land. The commercial would be at fifty thousand, and the single family will be at forty thousand. And Mr. Speaker, you would note that the depth of the land extends to 100 feet as opposed to the usual compressed land that we see today and that will allow individuals to engage in their own personal backyard farming so that they can have fresh vegetables etc and i am certain that in keeping with the ministry of an, of agriculture's programs where they are providing behemoths with the necessary equipment for backyard farming, but in addition to that, they're providing behemoths with necessary fruit trees and other items. And I am certain that the Ministry of Agriculture would be more than happy as part of their food program to provide trees within such areas so individuals <coughs> have access to fruits and fresh fruits and vegetables. The government, Mr. Speaker, will put in place the necessary infrastructure so that the lots would be worth in the vicinity of $150,000. Thus, individuals starting with an equity of $100,000 or more. I should note, Mr. Speaker, that lots in the vicinity are well in excess of $150,000 today. And therefore, I see no reason why, as we speak today, <coughs> the lots may be at 150, but I see no reason why, after once the infrastructure and other amenities are in place, the price of those lots will be well in excess of $200,000, of which our behemoth, our citizens, would be able to purchase at forty and fifty thousand dollars respectively. The, the committee has already spoken with a number of banks, Mr. Speaker, who are anxious to come on board and provisionally they have stated that individuals would not have to come up with any down payment which is one of the greatest obstacles for home construction. And that would be possible because the equity would be so large. And Mr. Speaker, banks that we had not spoken to, those individuals, other banks, have called and stated that they too would like to be a part of this program. But Mr. Speaker, I don't want to say much about the banking and financial sector at this point in time because we have members here on the government side who are well knowledgeable 
in both real estate and banking, and I'm certain that they would make their contribution. Mr. Speaker, another savings to the Bahamian populace in addition to this massive saving. Another saving, Mr. Speaker, there'll be at least 10 architectural design where individuals can select one of the 10 for their home. And thus they would not be subjected to the traditional architectural fees that we see today. Mr. Speaker, the average home in such area would be about 250 to $300,000 which means that the architectural fee for such facility to that individual would be about $30,000. But under this program, they would only have to purchase a plan for $1,000, plus an additional saving of $29,000. The government will also grant certain exemptions to make the construction of the homes more affordable by waiver of customs duties on all building materials and appliances. In order to ensure the development is completed in a timely manner, home construction will need to be completed within two years of purchase. There will be, Mr. Speaker, no stamp tax, There will be no real property tax for a minimum of two years. And as the committee continues and completes their job, there would be more concessions that would be offered. Mr. Speaker, we want to complete the second component of the Bahamian Grant. Mr. Speaker, small businesses are the heart and soul of our economy. My government is passionate about helping small business people. We want new businesses established. We want existing small businesses to grow. In this new community, opportunities will be provided for young entrepreneurs to provide residential and commercial services for lawn and garden care, planting and removal, irrigation and drainage, landscape design and stone and hardscaping. In designing a residential subdivision, Mr. Speaker, it is important to take waste management into account. Opportunity will be provided for an entrepreneur to collect and dispose of domestic and commercial waste. Mr. Speaker, I want to point out that such development will offer great opportunities for new entrepreneurship. In terms of garbage collection, a new entrepreneur may enter such facility where the trucks are smaller, a condensed version, as opposed to the big trucks that we see moving through our streets. We have smaller, condensed trucks. Individuals would be able to enter contractual arrangement, one or two trucks, to perform the collection in such facility, and such trucks being brought in for such investment again will receive all the necessary duty concessions so that they can start up a business quite adequately. So that is one business. A second business with so many homes and other facilities, landscaping is essential. And therefore there's no reason why you cannot have two or three new landscapers engaged in such facility. And Mr. Speaker, that is important because you would have better control of the number of individuals moving into such an um, area, and that is important in terms of security. 
as opposed to free for all. But also, in terms of garbage collection, the garbage bins would be somewhat standardized where one can use the plastic bins with the necessary caps or top. And individuals must keep their bins within the garage facility knowing that their garbage collection may be 11 o'clock on a particular day. And if it's 11 o'clock, they must bring their bin to the ex outside of their home at 9 o'clock so that their bins can be emptied and by 12 o'clock the bins must be transported back into the garage in a safe environment so as to minimize the possibility of rodents and other infestations. Mr. Speaker, that again will offer some form of entrepreneurship. The entrepreneurs, Mr. Speaker, will be required to establish a waste management plan with a waste management system. The clubhouse will also be an organized commercial operation for an entrepreneur. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, we understand that the young people in this development will have families or be about to start families. As a result, the community will have provision for a preschool. And I've just shown that, Mr. Speaker, in the design plan, where preschool is provided within such area, and that is new investment for such individuals. This preschool will be built on the government's ongoing program to provide free preschool education. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the committee will make a determination as to the cost of such land for preschool, but the government has programs for such development, and I am certain that individuals would take advantage of such an investment as we hope that those in the family islands would likewise do the same. And this initiative will expand access to land for a broad cross-section of young Bahamians. Mr. Speaker, there was a... a Mr. Speaker, there was a subdivision. My government, Mr. Speaker, is about people. It's about ensuring that people are given the greatest opportunity to, to expand their wealth, grow, and develop. There was a subdivision. There is a subdivision developed in the Fort Charlotte area by the former government. Individuals were charged as high as one hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars for such homes within that area. When we came in, Mr. Speaker, we felt that was too high, and we subsequently dropped the price to one hundred and forty thousand dollars. It's unfortunate that those who went in under the PLP are paying up to $182,000 and those that went in under the f and are paying one hundred and forty. But so be it. We can't change that. Senator, I know you'd do something about that. But Mr. Speaker, and they say it's not the people's time. It is certainly the people's time. Do you not agree, fine? Then, Mr. Speaker, in addition to that 182,000, Sandoval, who is an accountant, would tell us that at the end of the day, those individuals will pay over $400,000. That is not right. Mr. Speaker, then there was another development. $10 million was being invested in a house 
Ned Goodman's Bay called the Playa property $10 million. And why? The purchase of a house so as to provide entertainment for the prime minister and whomever he want there, other ministers. Mr. Speaker, already the government has spent $7 million on such facility. I do not need such facility. And Mr. Speaker, I think it's essential that individuals see what the $10 million was being invested on. This is the structure today. Seven, four million was spent for the purchase and up to three million for $4 million. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think lead opposition say who we bought it, who they bought it from. Let me speak. Yeah. But <laughs> three million dollars renovation. So it's on NIB's book at this point in time for an excess of seven million dollars. But Mr. Speaker, rather than trying to spend ten million dollars to entertain the Prime Minister and whomever else, we prefer to invest in the people. This is another picture of the ten million dollar structure. But that is sitting on the books. I need no such entertainment and we will sell it. Uh, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador on a point of order. Why what, Mr. Speaker? Point of order. What's it? Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. My recollection of, of that project yeah, it was, that, I don't know about the $10 million investment. It was never $10 million. And I would ask the Prime Minister to establish that $10 million was to be spent and under what conditions they were going to be spent. It was never designed for any, it was not designed for any personal and or special entertainment center for the Prime Minister. It, it was, it was in keeping as, as is what occurring in most Caribbean countries, Caribbean, a, a, a center for entertainment of dignitaries from around the world. And so, and so, Mr. Speaker, and so Mr. Speaker, there is no to, to to attribute it to have some special, some special, some special interest personal to uh, the former prime minister is a mischaracterization of the investment. And I ask him to demonstrate to to me, us. The ten million dollars that was earmarked for it was never that amount. That that my recollection, and I and I and I invite him to justify that the expansion, that the extent that the expansion was to be ten million dollars, or withdraw that amount, or withdraw it. Sure. Speaker, um, already they spent seven. You see where we are. You would need. I, I would have, allow me to come please, allow me to come please. You, are, you ask a question, I would respond to your question. Rightly find out more often than not. Um, if it is asserting that $7 million was spent, I'm asking him to either, with, either establish that that was spent and or withdraw that. I also ask, that he established that $10 million was what was to be spent and all we thought as well. I love the leader of the opposition. 
Yeah. Let's speak. I made a mistake. I have. I accept. I made a mistake. It was not seven million dollars to be exact. It was six million nine hundred and eighty-one thousand nine hundred and forty-six thousand nine hundred forty dollars. I repeat. The leader opposition is correct. It's not seven million dollars by withdrawal. The exact amount is six million nine hundred and eighty-one thousand nine hundred and forty-six dollars. And not even a paint job. Not even a paint job. Mr. <laughs> Speaker. Another ten million dollars was to be earmarked for renovation of judge facility just opposite this development that I speak about. And if the needed opposition thinks I am fabricating, I would make such statement in public and you can sue me. Give me that opportunity to sit on the bench and spill my guts and subpoena all those who has the information. What you saying to you? Something's going to rise. Sue me. Um, uh, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Cat Island, Rumpkins, and Salvador. Yeah, on, a, on a point of order. What, what, what the, what campaign minister wish to do outside in the, uh, outside of this, uh, outside of this, uh, of this, uh, out of this, outside of these precincts, it's what, it's his choice. Uh, 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 honorable members. It's his choice, and those who may be offended by it will do what they have to do. But what I'm saying, in Parliament, if he's making assertions, all we're asking, as, to, as you often require, is for him to establish it. That's all. That's what we ask him to do. In the, in, in, the interest, in the interest of time, time is running out, and um, I am certain that my colleague, my colleague, Minister of Agriculture, who will wrap up this debate, I'm certain that he will elaborate on many things. Uh, hon honorable Member, the Stop Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Pine Ridge on a point of order. Didn't, didn't want to interrupt you, Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point Just of order? Yes. Oh, point of order. A clarification for my people and myself, because I, I want to just listen. The picture you just showed was that the was that supposed to be a house by the previous government for the house of the prime minister, or just a place for entertainment for the prime minister? Okay. And in addition to that, we are now also getting a piece of property for the future house building of the prime minister in this set of properties. Okay, that's why I'm asking. The property, the property for, the property for the official residence of the Prime Minister had been purchased a long time ago, and it still sits waiting for whichever Prime Minister will embark on such development. That was purchased for entertainment of Prime Minister, ministers, etc., etc. Right, but not for, for. Um, I don't want to impugn the Prime Minister. No, no. <laughs> sure recognizes the honorable member for Cat Island, Romkey, and San Salvador. Yes, on the point of order. That property was purchased during the 2002-2007 um, administration of the Progressive Party. Don't they say no check? I remember that. Right? And, the, and, and it was purchased to preserve it for proper access and to be a, a part of the Goodman's Bay amenity for behavior. No, 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 no I, I can tell you, man. I can tell you. The, mem the member from Freetown can tell you that. Because they were trying to buy it for the Bahama project. It was, it's going to be buy for the Bahama project. Uh, uh, honorable and, members. And, and, the, and, the then, and, the, and the then administration, the then administration refused uh, 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 allow, honorable members allow them to buy the property and kept and bought it for the Bahamian people. And that's what it was bought for. To preserve it for the Bahamian people to have proper access to the, to the beach and also the purpose then was to convert it to a, a proper entertainment center for the government.
I wish I was wrapping up so I could have all day, but I'm sure my, my colleague minister will do a very good job. But speaking in the interest of time, I think the press, for those who don't know where this building is, Goodman's Bay, and it's about the second or third building moving first, moving on the eastern boundary. That's what the beach for. That's why we hold the beach. Yes, right. Come on, and take Bob's here. Any of Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, we're talking about twenty million dollars. 20 million. Ms. Speaker, we are providing young Bahamian professionals with access to land yes. at lower rates than are available on the open market. Future. We consider a professional as someone who is accomplished. Oh, they're talking with drug dealer. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sometimes we can be placed in an embarrassing situation. Kindly ask individuals to turn off all. Well, I don't want to hear about no drug dealer no more. Anyhow, Mr. Speaker, we consider a professional as someone who is accomplished in his or her field, sufficient independently to sustain a mortgage or the financial responsibility for a residential dwelling in the community. And this community, Mr. Speaker, is not restricted to a particular type of academic or professional training. You don't have to be a lawyer. You don't have to be a doctor or an engineer to qualify. Mr. Speaker, Barber properly qualified is a professional. A plumber properly qualified is a professional. A beautician with proper qualification is a professional. A police defense force, they are professionals. A teacher is a professional, Mr. Speaker. And that's just to give a few examples. And so is a farmer. He is a professional. So I don't want people to misconstrue that a professional is only a doctor, lawyer, or accountant. No. A professional has great definitions. And to be eligible, Mr. Speaker, you must be a Bahamian 45 years or younger who is resident in the Bahamas. You're not going to be overseas and try to build here. You must be here. Even though the subdivision is in New Providence, Family Island residents are eligible to apply. Applications are to be made by individuals or married couples. Two or more people may also apply. However, financial institutions will assess the risk determination of such applications and only first-time homeowners are eligible. The first-time homeowner status will be confirmed by the Registrar General's Department and the Department of Inland Revenue. An applicant may only be eligible once and may only acquire one property in any such government home owning initiative. The application and application process are being finalized as are other details. The Speaker Committee of Professionals are putting the entire plan and program together and an excellent recommendation has been emailed to us by a young lawyer and their recommendations were very valid and excellent and Ms. Speaker I therefore invite the public especially the young professionals young individuals to send forth their suggestions and their comments as to the direction of such development and they may send such 
suggestion to OPM communications at bahamasgov.bs or they can click on the suggestion link at opm.gov.bs. Ms. Speaker, it is anticipated the application process will open to the public this summer. In the interim, at the conclusion of this resolution, we will work toward the finalization of the transparent application and selection process. The execution of architectural drawings that can be purchased off the shelf and commencement of the infrastructure installation. No applications have been accepted to date for this community. I repeat, no applications have been accepted thus far. No list of persons has been established for this community. And guiding principles for the application process have been established. It will, Pine Ridge, be transparent. It will be digital. The Department of Transformation and Digitization has confirmed that it will prioritize making the application and submission of supporting documents possible online. There will be strict adherence to eligibility criteria. There will be no favoritism, no speculation and flipping of property. Government has the right of first refusal, but we will expand on that as we progress. No special group or special people will be prioritized. Unlike what was done in Dignity where individuals were selected. Ms. Speaker, we are not like them. Dignity is in my subdivision, my constituency. And when I campaigned in Dignity, the residents, you went there afterward. The residents would have informed me of how they got there. You had to be loyal to the PLP. And Mr. Speaker, as I moved through, there was a cousin of mine who occupied a home in dignity. My uncle's child, brothers and sisters. And I asked him, how in the world you got here? How you got here in dignity? He said, man, Whatever they wanted me to say, I said. <laughs> but you know, and I know, I'm an F and M. So he had to play. He had to pledge allegiance to the PLP to get there. But that's not. That's not about us. We won't do that. And that is why, Mr. That is why, Mr. Speaker, the Bahamians will never return to that grouping. Mr. Speaker, my government recognizes that the path to upward mobility and building up the middle class is through access to affordable land. I just want to say another little thing about dignity. Mr. Speaker, dignity to residents, some were given grass and fence. Fence, fence. After they discovered that he was a FNM and related to me, he was denied grass and fence. <laughs> the speaker, my government rec yeah. my government recognizes that the path to upward mobility and building up the middle class is through access to affordable land. 50 million. This is especially important for young people who have seen the cost of land move beyond their reach. If we want our young people to continually improve their status in life, they must have access to land as a foundation of their personal wealth. My government has a policy of empowerment through affordable land ownership. The announcement of the community for young professionals is not the first land development of my government. For example, we are in the process of another type of development in Carmichael, where the lot prices start at $15,000 for lots valued at over $70,000. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, in the Carmichael constituency, 
The commercial lots are sold for 20000 Commercial lots are 20000 and the residential are 15000 This is the development of the Carmichael subdivision. And this shows the progress being made, the infrastructural development in the Carmichael constituency. So these lots, Mr. Speaker, that you purchase at 15,000, that are valued at 70,000, and therefore, and Mr. Speaker, there will be further offerings at various different price levels. All will be in well-designed subdivisions with world-class infrastructure and suitable amenities. Our land empowerment initiatives are not one-off endeavors. They will go on for years and years, building on what the previous FNM governments have done in previous terms in office. We have already identified a number of tracts of Crown land in New Providence, an additional two we've identified, and in the Family Islands, where we will provide affordable land to Bahamians at various levels. In Grand Bahama, Mr. Speaker, a subdivision, oh, I don't know. a subdivision was developed, and in spite of the challenges and the problems Grand Bahama faced, the price is varied in this subdivision, just one mile before McLean's town. The price is varied from 16,000, some 22,000, 26,000, both residential, both multi uh, family as well as single family. We recognize the challenges that Grand Bahama face with Dorian and with pandemic. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, my government is proposing to decrease the price value for all these properties to be purchased in Grand Bahama by 50%. <laughs> and as these are outside of the Freeport zone, they will be entitled to all of the goodies that are being offered here in New Providence. <laughs> after all, <laughs> after all, Pine Ridge, you are still our brother. Yeah. And I know, I know when I'm finishing and start to talk about um, uh, um, the Caracom Nation, Gonzales and St. Vincent that's being affected, I am certain you will support us assisting this time. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our intention is for thousands of Bahamian first-time homeowners to benefit from our vision for wealth creation, ownership, and empowerment. This is how we expand the middle class. This is how we empower our people. And therefore, as we continue our development in the Family Islands along the same direction, 10 minutes, yeah, there are running. I was surprised to read online from Eyewitness News on March 29, 2021, various criticisms of our land initiative from the member from the Exumas on Ragged Island. The one thing I thought we all could agree on is providing access to land to young Bahamians. Yet, as has been their practice for our, enti for our entire term, if we propose it, the opposition will find some way to criticize it. As a demonstration of how reckless and irresponsible their criticism have been, the opposition went as far as opposing a number of life-saving emergency public health measures during the worst global pandemic in 100 years. Their opposition to the emergency health measures that are saving Bahamian lives will go down as one of the most disgraceful decisions of any elected party in Bahamian history. Countries around the world are using versions of these measures. 
But because we propose them here to save Bahamian lives, the opposition is against them. In the FNM, Mr. Speaker, we put Bahamian lives before partisanship. In the FNM. Chair recognizes Honorable Member for Cat Island, Ramkin from Salvador, on a point of order. Member for Calad is truly crossing the line. Right? For him to suggest that we on this side have less care or concern about the lives of the Bahamian people huh? is despicable and ought not to be coming from the, the mouth of a Prime Minister. <laughs> Speaker, when did when was it when was it that we ever did we ever not did we ever not open up the bars? Ever not support the support the measures he put in. We we our position has always been is the manner in which he implemented the measures. Because on each occasion it seemed to have produced chaos and confusion. One, we made recommendations. We made recommendations to this government as to how we see things ought to. Our concerns have always been that we are performing worse than most countries in our region. I got you. And I don't say that. That is what is said, and what is said by by just look at the numbers. Just look at the numbers, Mr. Speaker. We we are worst, and we don't have to be this bad. That has always been our position. Okay, can I finish? Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, we've had this debate before, the opposition leader and myself and us. I would proceed. The opposition leader has a time to speak, and when he speaks, I will use his time by jumping up and interjecting. Mr. Speaker, in the FNM, we believe giving land to young Bahamians is the right thing to do. Those of us in public life should be able to agree on good policy initiatives, such as this subdivision. And a similar subdivision is to be done in Exuma. It is fine for legislators to make suggestions as to how to improve ideas. However, just criticizing for political reasons is disgraceful. We will continue to move aggressively to give land to Bahamian. We will continue to move aggressively to empower our next generation. And I say to all those young people who are watching me as I speak, it is all about your future. We make no apologies for supporting Bahamians, Mr. Speaker. The purpose of good government is to give a chance to those who are being historically denied opportunity. Good government is about making sure young people in our next generation can meet their full potential. And that is why we are here, Pinewood, or Pine Ridge. That is why we are here. This is the work we intend to keep doing. We intend to make the Bahamian dream a reality. Education, home, jobs, and health care. Mr. Speaker, before I end, it is necessary that I make a few comments on the pandemic. It has been a difficult year. We are all tired and restrictions. We are all tired of restrictions and being distant. We'd all like to live the lives we were accustomed to before this deadly virus spread around the world. But while we are frustrated, we must remain disciplined and abide by the public health measures for a while longer. The pandemic is raging around the world. There is particular difficulty in various parts of our region of the Americas. South America is experiencing a significant surge while parts of the Caribbean and North America are having challenges also. Europe is dealing with its own upswing of cases which has led to a wave of restrictions and lockdowns on the continent. The pandemic, Mr. Speaker, is not over, and I ask Bahamians to continue to follow the mitigation protocols. If we are slack and stop practicing the public health measures, we too could have significant problems. 
In the past few weeks, cases have risen in the Bahamas, and this has led to increased hospitalizations. To help slow the spread, we must redouble our efforts. We must remember to avoid massive gatherings, be physically distant, when out, wear your mask properly over both your nose and mouth, wash or sanitize your hands regularly, and keep them away from your face, and when you are eligible, get vaccinated. Vaccinations are our way out of this pandemic. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're giving you bad information. The virus that causes COVID-19 is very, very infectious, and it spreads easily. New variants of concern have emerged, and they have been even easier to catch. Scientists think they are deadlier also. If you are eligible, waiting to take a vaccine could cost you your life. While you are waiting, you could catch this deadly virus. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, we have one of the worst health profiles in the world due to the high rates of obesity and chronic non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. And COVID-19 is particularly dangerous to Bahamians. Many Bahamians have multiple comorbidities. And I say do not just ignore the virus. Do not think it won't affect you. This pandemic will only then end when significant, a significant majority of Bahamians are vaccinated. And my government has secured doses and we are working day and night to secure more so that every adult Bahamian who wants to be vaccinated can be vaccinated. But for the vaccine to work, you must come forward and take it. The more we get vaccinated, the more we can open up the economy. This means more jobs, increased working hours, and more wealth for Bahamians. In these difficult times, let's stay focused on what, on what is important to get us through this crisis and back to normal. Abide by the public health measures. Get vaccinated when it is your time. Mr. Speaker, the resolution we debate today will help to secure homes and a better future for more young Bahamians. We are securing dreams and opportunities. We are making the Bahamian dream a reality. We will ensure that it is not just a dream. It is and will become a reality. You agree, Pinedridge? <laughs> it is with this great hope that I support this resolution. Mr. Speaker, I so move. But Mr. Speaker, before I read the resolution, I only want to say that I only want to say that St. Vincent is experiencing volcanic eruption. And even during the day, complete darkness. Because of the ash, the sun is occluded, and they are in continuous darkness, especially the areas that are affected. Ashes are island and because of the direction of the wind Barbados is likewise affected and the speaker I can tell you from experience having lived in Barbados and being there in 1980 having experienced a similar explosion in one of the islands went to bed waking up that morning finding the entire island covered in ash it is a massive cleanup um, host um, the heart the volcano to clean up this massive amount of ash. I've spoken to Mayor Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, told me of their challenge for cleaning up. They've embarked on that, and even Barbados, though daylight, 
is experiencing darkness. I've spoken to Prime Minister Gonzalez and to Lucia. St. Vincent. And I reassured him that I would take the matter to Canada and we would offer whatever assistance we can. I want all Bahamians to remember that when we were affected by Dorian, Jamaica said, this is all my speech now, Jamaica said, it's the fence for us here to assist us. Now, I, I, got to, to, I got to read it. I have to read it. Um, Jamaica said it's the fence for us to assist us in, in uh, and assisted security. Trinidad and Barbados likewise sent their defense force here to assist us with security. Had it not been for their assistance, we could have experienced severe problems within um, the Abaco and the Abaco. And the speaker um, cabinet had met and were proposing to send monetary, though times are hard with us, I am certain that all responsible and loving the human would agree that under these circumstances, things are even worse for them, that their whole agricultural products would be covered in ash, their water lines would be affected. Um, Barbados has already offered to accept many of individuals from St. Vincent who has relatives or <coughs> relationships there and um, I think it's essential that we do our part and I'm happy to see that you agree with me today, Pine Rich. And Mr. Speaker, it's too Mr. Speaker, I've also spoken with the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Allen, and um, he has informed me that St. Lucia at this point in time has not been affected because the wind is blowing towards Barbados as opposed to solution. So I want all Bohemians to support us in assisting our Caracom brothers and sisters who are presently experiencing complete darkness, no daylight, and whose farmlands, homes, and other entities are completely covered in ash. And I won't be surprised, Mr. Speaker, depending on the weight of the ash, that can pose challenges to the roofing of some homes, as you know, it can subsequently collapse. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I'd like to read the first and the last part of the resolution. Whereas the government of the Bahamas, the government, recognizes that the cost of land in the Bahamas, and especially in New Providence, has made it prohibitive for many young Bahamians to achieve their dreams of owning their own homes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this house supports the development of the said hereditament as an upscale community for young Bahamian professionals and the granting of sessions which would allow them the opportunity to access affordable land for the building of their homes within the western area of New Providence and Pursuant to Section 53A of the said Act, this House approves the conveyance of the said hereditament by the Treasurer to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in the right of our government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for the sum of $10 in the said currency. I so move, Mr. Speaker.